chimp fired up at 500 degrees. It's been preheating for one hour with a quarter inch bacon steel. Let's go ahead and take a look at the setup and see what it looks like. So that's pretty much what she looks like. And it fits perfectly. I just took out the existing racks and it sits right on the rails. I mean, it's meant to be. So this thing, I mean, it's screaming hot right now. It's been sitting there, like I said, for an hour at 500 degrees. Shut this lid and not to let no heat out. But it's a quarter inch. And these baking steels, if you don't know about them, uh, they're far superior than a stone. They really hold a lot of thermal mass and they, they get you that nice browning and rise, you know, especially when you're using a lower temperature oven or pellet grill or any kind of utensil you're cooking your pizzas on. I know a lot of people say you want to go low and slow on pizzas or 400 degrees or 350. That's not true. I've been doing pizzas for a long time. You want to get it as hot as possible to get that browning and to get that oven spring. Uh, usually I use a professional propane fired oven for pizzas. Uh, it gets about 900 to 1000 degrees and I knock them out in 60 seconds. But today I really want to try it because I've never done it on a pellet grill with the baking steel. So I really want to see what this got. Plus, I mean, it's hot out here. You could probably hear the background noise of the air conditioners running and all my neighbors, but it's about 102 and there's no way I'm going to fire up my home oven or go out in the garage and fire up a thousand degree oven. So I'm going to give this a try and uh, we'll see either it's going to be good or it's not, but uh, let's find out. All right guys, so here I have a 48 hour dough. It's been in the refrigerator for 48 hours. And I wanted to sprinkle a little bit of flour on top to make sure it doesn't stick. Uh, you don't want to use a whole lot. Less is more with flour. Put some on your surface. Make sure you can open easily, it's not gonna stick. And uh, later on we will be removing some excess flour. I'll show you how I do that. I just turn this upside down and let it sit until it naturally starts releasing on its own. You don't want to force it and tear the bottom. Uh, that's probably one of the worst things you can get. You'll get thin spots and all kinds of bad things that happen with that. So just let it, nah, still not ready, still sticking a little bit. So, you know, sometimes you just let gravity do it and you give it a you know, little extra help, but it'll, it'll come on its own mostly. See, there we go. A little bit more flour on top to make sure it's not sticky. And a little bit more on your surface. You want to just keep spreading the flour around, make sure it's not coated on too thick. You don't want excess, that's the whole secret to pizza, no excess flour. Start from the middle, start pressing out to the edges, flip it, middle, press out to the edges, then you're going to turn it a quarter turn, and you just keep working it and pressing out to the edges. What you're doing is moving the gas bubbles out, that way you get that crust, and you don't want to press your hands you just want to use the pads of your fingers you don't want to use your palms or your whole fingers just the pads you can gently press out to the center to the edge quarter inch that way you leave the air in there you don't want to degas it if you want that poofy crust if you want a thin crust then you press it all the way out but you just keep working this back and forth and right now you're just shaping it when you can fit a whole palm of your hand in there comfortably then it's time to slap it open to remove the excess and Get it a little bit bigger. So I just keep working a little bit, and then right here I'm going to remove the flour, and we're going to do a Neapolitan slap. I'm going to slap it down, pull it, and turn. Slap, pull, and turn. You can just keep repeating this. And you can see all the flour falling off, and it's also opening and getting bigger. So I'll move the flour again. Slap it a couple more times. And then we'll take it and we'll put it on the back of our knuckles and just kind of rotate it, make sure it's nice and even. Lay it down, remove the flour. Make sure if no thick or any edges like that. And then you grab it and slap it back and forth. And this is going to remove even more flour and stretch it open nice and evenly. You just get the motion back and forth and you're got a pizza going. And then you just keep moving it, stretching it out a little bit. Now's the time you want to get the full size. So you just tug on the corners a little bit and just evenly press it and make sure there's no thick spots. Just keep
Keep stretching it around, working it. Yeah, I like to press it, like I said, and make sure there's no thin or thick spots. Uh, sometimes you'll get like a little thick piece of dough right there in the crust. And then I put it on my peel to make sure it fits and it's the size I want right here. Tug it around. And that's about what I want right there. That's perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and get this topped. Put the sauce, cheese, and pepperoni on there. And we'll throw her up in the oven and see where she is. You always want to shake this before you launch it or else it'll stick. you got to kind of act quick. You always want to do little micro shakes. But there she is. Let's get her in the oven and let her rip. All right, if there's anything I've learned is don't have fear. When you launch it, you let it go. Always give it a little shake before you go, make sure it's not sticking. Pull it away about an inch. Let it go. Shut her up. Come back in a couple minutes. All right, let's check out. Yeah, she's looking good. Crispy bottom. Nice. So we'll get inside and check her out. All right, she's done. Looking beautiful, nice cheese melt, nice pooling of the oils, crispy bottom, beautiful color. Turned out great, so let's go ahead and cut her up and uh, see what she got. Yeah, nice little crunch to it. So the bottom is nice and crispy, still soft in the middle, crust is nice and pillowy. So you could definitely do this with a pellet grill. It is a great option actually for summertime like right now when it's 102 degrees outside and you don't want to heat up your house with your home oven. Uh, the baking still definitely made a big difference. So let's look at the cross section. Yeah, just the thickness I like. Oh, I don't like real thin crust pizza. I've done it, but uh, I like a little bit, you know, thicker texture to it. And uh, this is great. So I'll get this served up to the family. Hope you guys enjoyed and uh, if you want more cooking videos and follow me on my journey, please like and uh, follow me. Thank you.